Hey guys, it's K Tower back again with another Pokemon card painting video. This time with better audio. So before we start, like and subscribe if you haven't already. This time, I'm going to paint the starter set consisting of Squirtle, Charmander, and Bulbasaur. The first step I usually take when painting Pokemon cards is to prime the cards. I'm sure you can skip this step if you'd like, but I find that it helps to mask the text underneath and is easier to paint on later. When priming the cards, make sure you use a very thin layer of paint. If you use too much paint or water to paint down too much, the Pokemon card can warp. While your prime layer is drying, take this opportunity to sketch out what you want your cards to look like. I like to add a little humor and story to mine, so I added some squirtle shaped footsteps in the sand to show that he's been running around. In the Bulbasaur card, I decide to extend the river and add some lily pads into the water. I feel like the lily pads match well with the patterns on Bulbasaur's head and the green bulb on its back. The Charmander card already has a bit of humor in it. As we can see, it's catching stuff on fire accidentally to cause full-blown natural disasters to the surrounding lands. To tie this card in with the other two cards as a set, I decided to add some water in and have some lily pads floating in this pond as well. To continue the Charmander card's fire humor, I then added a fiery log into the lake to show that off-camera he's still causing a fiery disaster. And voila! My sketches are now complete. The third step to take while painting the Pokemon cards is to start filling in the largest blocks of color and to make sure that all the parts of the card that should be covered now have paint. A question some of you have asked me in my last video is where I get my paint. I use acrylic paint and I just buy it from the local dollar store. The reason why I like acrylic paint is because it dries very fast, can be easily mixed to create new colors, and is perfect for the layering type of art techniques that I use in my paintings. For these cards, I used a very thin painted brush for details and a wider flat brush for filling in blocks of color. At this step, take in mind that small details don't matter yet. Although it doesn't look great at this point yet, just focus on getting about the correct colors. Here I decided to mix in some red and yellow paint in order to make the sand a little more orange to match the original Pokemon image. Now that I've blocked in all of the major areas of color, I can start to add more details to the Pokemon card. Here I actually forgot to add the water to the Charmander card in the previous step, but because acrylic dries so fast and can paint over itself quite well, I was able to paint the water over top. First I blocked in the major blue shape and added some lighter blue to the top. The details I added include some dirt that I gradually blend into the water, and some vague color reflections of Charmander in its fire tail. Next I color match the dark grass to make sure it continues on throughout the card, and start adding the rest of the rocks, mountains, and fire into the background. An interesting thing about painting Pokemon cards is that you can sort of pick up the original artist techniques for painting things. For example, the use of shape and style in this fire which I incorporated into my own style. So painting Pokemon cards for me is a great way to learn as well as use new color combinations that I might not normally use. Next, I add the flaming log. I choose to mix in brown with black for a very charred looking log, as it's already been burning for quite a while. Next, I add lily pads and a few water lilies just to give the composition a little more pop of color. Moving on to the Bulbasaur, I decide to revamp the sketch a bit to make the water feel more like a twisting river. I like the bricks the original artist used at the water builder, so I'd like to continue the use of bricks and use some in the foreground as well. I spend a bit of time to better color match the grass. The previous layer of paint that I used for the grass looks too bluish. So for this layer, I added a bit more yellow. 
I use a few layers of differently colored green strokes to create the effect of grass, and I use a green that's darker and slightly more bluish for the shadow. As a pro tip, the reason why shadows appear slightly blue in daytime is because it is not being lit by sunlight, only by ambient light. Ambient light means reflected light from the environment, which in daytime usually includes the blue sky. Just make sure not to go too crazy with the blue and shadows, or use blue in the time of day where the sky is not blue, or if it's raining. Next I added some lily pads, as well as some water lily flowers. I will lighten them up later, after working on the squirtle a little. After choosing the paint colors I will be using to mix the colors needed for the Squirtle card, I start filling in some details of the painting. I really like the use of the saturated bright blue here. I blend the colors in to make a nice gradient, and then start adding water waves and foam by using a small brush with white paint. Next I add some dark smudges to show the foot imprints in the sand make some random dots of color to look like sand piles, add some blue for water into the foot imprints, and add the shells. Next, I add more details to the cliffs and some birds flying in the air. Returning to the Bulbasaur card, I mixed a dark green by mixing some black in, to add some shadows and create a 3D lily pad effect. I mixed a lighter green with a bit more yellow in it to lighten up the lily pads. And here I am just pulling off the masking tape I was using to hold the cards down, since I was using my left hand to hold the camera. Finally, the last step is to just gently scratch off any paint that made its way to the back side of the card before putting the cards in protective sleeves. Since you saw how easy it was to scratch the paint off, it is definitely important to protect the cards, whether through card covers like these or by using a varnish. I like using white sleeves on all my cards because it ties them all together and gives them a nice clean look. And there you go, here's the final result. If you liked this video, please thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or do whatever you want. For more Pokemon video painting tutorials, check out this Rowlet one I made a while ago. I also have some digital speed paints, so if you want to check them out- Whoa, whoa, wait, don't look at that- <clears throat> Anyways, in the future I'm going to be making some game development videos where I go through the process of me making a video game. So if you're creative and like video games, then watch out for that in the future. Anyways, if you've stuck with me for this long, thank you so much for watching this video. Kitar out!